Today we're looking at Francis Marion. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, don't forget to check out dailybellringer.com where you'll find more resources that go with many of the Bell Ringer videos. Francis Marion was a hero of the American Revolution and would later be called the father of modern guerrilla military tactics. His unconventional military strategy and ability to attack and then disappear earned him the nickname the Swamp Fox. Much of Marion's life and military career was the inspiration for the action depicted in the 2000 film The Patriot. Francis Marion was born on February 26, 1732 in Berkeley County, South Carolina on his family's plantation. He was one of six children born to Gabriel and Charlotte Marion. When Francis was about six years old, his family moved to a new plantation near present-day Georgetown, South Carolina. At the age of 15, Marion joined the crew of a ship sailing to the Bahamas. On the return voyage, the ship was hit by a whale and sunk. Marion spent seven days on a lifeboat at sea with the crew before reaching shore. In 1757, at about the age of 25, Marion volunteered to join the South Carolina State Militia and fight in the French and Indian War. Much of the action Marion saw during the war was fighting the Cherokee on the western border of South Carolina. During this time, he observed the manner in which the Cherokee fought, using the terrain and cover of forests to ambush their enemy. This manner of fighting was very different from the conventional British tactic of lining up in lines and firing on their enemy. Years later, Marion would apply these Native American tactics during the American Revolution. After the French and Indian War concluded, Marion returned to farming in eastern South Carolina. By 1773, he purchased Pond Bluff Plantation. Marion became wealthy from his plantation, but that wealth was built upon the labor of enslaved people. It's estimated that Marion owned upwards of 200 enslaved people on his property. During this time, he was elected to the South Carolina Provincial Congress as tensions with Britain continued to grow in the early 1770s. After the opening shots of the American Revolution, having military and fighting experience, Marion was made a captain of his own regiment. With 400 men under his command, his first orders were to construct Fort Sullivan at Charleston, South Carolina. On June 28, 1776, at the Battle of Fort Sullivan, the British attempted to capture Charleston. The British were unsuccessful and instead turned their attention towards New York and would not return to South Carolina until 1780. In early 1780, Marion suffered a broken ankle and left his post at Charleston to recuperate. While he was away, the British laid siege to Charleston and captured the city in May of 1780, marking one of the worst defeats for the Americans during the Revolution. Despite his ankle injury, Marion was able to form a company of 50 men who attacked a British camp near Charleston and was able to free over 150 American prisoners of war. Shortly after, Marion and his small militia were placed under the command of General Horatio Gates, who had little respect for Marion and sent him out on scouting missions. While out scouting, Gates and the Americans were easily defeated at the Battle of Camden on August 16th of 1780 by British forces under General Charles Cornwallis. The British army under Cornwallis now began to march north, sweeping through the Carolinas. Marion and his militia now embarked on a guerrilla war against the advancing British forces. Marion used hit-and-run tactics, hiding under cover, and never engaging the British head-on, but rather picking away at them using stealth and speed. The British were forced to divide their forces to pursue the crafty Americans. Marion would go on to win victories at Georgetown, Terracote Swamp, Great Savannah, among many others. Growing frustrated with Marion's attacks, Lieutenant Colonel Bannister Tarleton and his dragoons or horse soldiers were sent out to track down Marion in November of 1780. Tarleton and his forces got on Marion's trail and chased him for 26 miles through South Carolina swamps, but eventually gave up with Tarleton stating, As for this old fox, the devil himself could not catch him. This earned Marion the nickname the Swamp Fox. As Cornwallis and the British were eventually defeated at Yorktown, Virginia in October of 1781, Francis Marion continued to lead his militia until he was elected to the South Carolina State Assembly in 1782. Shortly after, the British withdrew their troops from the region. Marion returned to his Pond Bluff plantation but found that it was in ruins after the British occupation. Shortly thereafter, at the age of 54, he married his 49-year-old cousin, Mary Esther Vadu. He continued to serve in the South Carolina legislature until his death on February 27, 1795, at the age of 63. 
Although not revered or remembered like other Revolutionary War heroes such as George Washington or Henry Knox, Francis Marion's contribution to the American cause was instrumental in bringing the war to an end with an American victory and independence. So with that, hopefully you learned something and thanks for watching.